Alyssa and welcome to Teach, Read, Play. In today's video I will be exploring the different ways that we can help to support children, mental health and well-being on their return to school, post school closure. I hope you enjoyed the video, please remember to comment, like and subscribe and turn notifications on to see more content like this. So when children return back to school, they will be coming back to us with lots and lots of apprehension and also anxiety that's been built up through the time of the school closure. So it's absolutely crucial that we explore this as practitioners at school. When children come back to the classroom and return, it's really crucial that we can start proving that this is an environment that they feel safe and nurtured in. So some of the ways that you can do this is by promoting a healthy way to talk about thoughts and feelings and emotions in your classroom. Really diminishing the stigma about, against negative thoughts and really promoting a way that we all have these thoughts and the way to explore them and deal with them. Coping mechanisms. So here are some of the things that you can do when you return back to school. Firstly, activity number one, letting things go. So you can speak to your children about some of the things that they've really missed doing during lockdown. Now, some of the children might talk about missing family members, not going to sports clubs, not going to school. You can then talk about these in real detail, really making sure that the children understand that these thoughts and feelings are valued, they're important really talking about them and exploring them and maybe how they felt in their bodies around it. Once doing that, you want to really encourage children to develop the skill of letting go so they're not festering in their own thoughts and feelings. So, grabbing a set of post-it notes, you can ask the child to write down on each post-it note something that they missed during lockdown. So once they've written down something they've missed in lockdown, you can have a chat about it and then you want to take that post-it note off, screw it up and throw it in the bin. Throwing it in the bin is a great way to help children understand that emotions and feelings can be there. We can deal with them and then let them go. After using that activity, you can then move on to activity number two. Activity number two is by writing down or drawing a poster about things that you're looking forward to post school closure. So coming back to school and working towards a new normality, getting children to think about what their life might be like in the future. Things that they're looking forward to doing again, maybe things that make them happy, things that they're excited about. So creating their own poster about things that they're looking forward to in the future. Activity number three, creating your own worry jar. So to create your own worry jar, you need gla a glass jar. Now it's really good to have a glass jar so you can put everything inside, but the children can also visualize and see inside. So a worry jar is where children can open up the jar and pop in any things that they have that worry them. Now you can write these again on post-it notes or little scraps of paper. It's also really important to get the children to remember that no worries are too big or too small to put inside the jar. It helps to give them a way of understanding what their worries are, naming them and also putting them away into a safe and contained space. A space that can be explored and protected. Now they can decorate their own worry jar and this can be a place that they go to. That brings me nicely on to activity number four. Now if you've got plenty of glass jars, why not try making an appreciation jar? In your jar you could put in a number of things that you are grateful for. Now it can also be a memorabilia jar. It could be some things that they appreciate and that they have to physically um, put into the jar. If not, they can write those ideas again on a post-it note or on a scrap piece of paper. That brings me nicely on to activity number five. Now again, staying with the jar idea, this could now become a lockdown jar. 
they can put in all of the different thoughts and feelings or skills that they developed during lockdown inside their jar. This is a really quite great way to have something physical for the children to go back to and reflect on that experience. Once having something that they can reflect on is something that they can explore when they're ready. Activity number six. Why not take your class or your child out for a mindful walk? Taking children out into the fresh air and into nature so that they can be at one with nature. To reconnect and to breathe within a new environment. Getting children to be mindful of the steps that they take. So taking children into a park, getting them to stop in silence and just look at their surroundings. You also might want to get them to close their eyes and take some deep breaths and take them in the environment. You can then start getting them to mindfully walk through the park, taking in any of the seasonal changes and thinking about things that they are grateful for. Also, as the sun comes out, getting them to look up into the sun, close to their eyes and letting that sun energy re-energise them. Activity number seven. Why not work with each child and create your own circle time? Using a circle time is a great way to help aid dialogue between the children. This helps to engage a dialogic approach between the children at talking about their thoughts and feelings. Now, you could use this as a forum to start talking about things that happened during their lockdown experience. Or you could then use this as a forum to open up discussion about what they're looking forward to about being back at school. This is a great way to help children identify their thoughts and feelings and also empathise with one another. Activity number eight. Why not get your child to draw a picture to describe or to represent their lockdown experience? Using a different range of medium and resources around the children to help them create something that is significant to them. Why not explore different pieces of art to show them that you can use a variety of different features in your art and different colours to represent the different motions that you felt. This is a great way to help children start identifying and relating to the different emotions that they experienced. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope that these are great practical ideas that you can use. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.